Hi, I'm here to tell you about Rubisco. When you eat a leaf of salad, or indeed any leaf, somewhere between 10 and 25% of the protein that you ingest is a particular kind of protein called ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate carboxylase oxidase, commonly shortened to Rubisco. Rubisco is an enzyme, which means that it's a protein that does things to other molecules. It cuts them apart, or it pieces them together, or it fiddles about with them different ways. Essentially, enzymes are what make life happen. Rubisco is a very special enzyme indeed, for three reasons. Number one, it is the most abundant protein in the world. Plants and other photosynthesizing organisms organisms produce it in enormous amounts. It is estimated that about 40 million tons of Rubisco exist on this planet. Number two, Rubisco is extremely important because it performs the chemical reaction by which carbon is taken up during photosynthesis and turned into organic carbon. In other words, every single atom of carbon in your body, which you acquired from eating plants or from eating animals that had in turn been eating plants, became part of the bodies of those plants through the action of Rubisco. Rubisco is the gatekeeper of the chemical gateway through which carbon enters the biosphere. So Rubisco has this very profound, almost ceremonial role in nature, which makes it all the more hilarious that, number three, it is astoundingly, hopelessly bad at its job. Allow me to explain. Rubisco is involved in something called the Calvin Cycle. D not the other Calvin Cycle, which is part of photosynthesis. Its responsibility is to take a molecule called ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate, let's call it Steve, and turn it into another molecule called 3-phosphoglycerate, let's call it Jenny. And this is where the carbon dioxide comes in. One Steve plus one carbon dioxide gives two Jenny. Uh, the Calvin cycle makes another turn, and each of the ten odd other enzymes involved perform their respective tasks. But here's the rub. Sometimes, in fact as often as every second or third time, instead of reaching for a molecule of carbon dioxide, Rubisco uses an oxygen molecule instead for its reaction. Steve plus oxygen equals phosphoglycolate. Phosphoglycolate is perfectly useless. It also happens to be toxic. Are you getting this? The world's most common protein used by all plants, in fact all photosynthetic organisms, every day, all the time, everywhere, produces copious amounts of a poisonous byproduct. Face? Meat palm. Now as a result of this, plants have been forced to develop complicated chemical and cellular machinery and even special kinds of tissue to get rid of all this phosphoglycolate, turn it into something useful, and keep the oxygen levels in their bodies as low as possible to make it harder for Rubisco to act like a complete idiot. As you can imagine, this wastes a lot of energy. In fact, this is why plants produce so much Rubisco to begin with. Because it sucks! Because you need a lot of it to get anything done! Nah, Rubisco. You can't live with it, you can't live without it. And you can't, because there's no replacement for Rubisco. There are no alternative mechanisms that can take its place. In effect, Rubisco is a bit like democracy. It's inefficient, it's unwieldy, and it's incredibly high maintenance, but in the end, it's the only thing that works. Uh, genetic engineers have tried altering the code for Rubisco, changing its structure in one way or the other, but they've consistently failed to crank down the harmful oxygen reaction, which, by the way, is known as photorespiration, without also cranking down the beneficial carbon dioxide reaction, which is the point of what the enzyme does. It's stuck. It's been optimized for maximum efficiency and minimum stupidity. It's not really surprising that they've failed if you consider the fact that two billion years of evolution haven't been able to fix the problem either. Now, at this point you may be wondering, is nature stupid? Can they fix this? Isn't evolution supposed to make things better? But the fact is that besides being kind of the ultimate embarrassment of cellular biology, Rubisco illustrates a very salient point about how evolution works. It's a tinkering process, it's not a process of design. It can't build anything from scratch, you can just fiddle with what it already has. And if that fiddling causes what you have to stop working, then you're just shit out of luck. I mean, imagine that there's just one kind of shoes in the world, and these shoes are constantly biting your toes, and everybody spends lots of money on band-aids and really thick socks, and you can't just make new shoes, you can only make alterations to the existing shoes, and if you remove the sharp teeth from your biting shoes, then the shoes fall apart and catch fire. Now, the probable reason behind this botanical farce is that Rubisco is very, very old. It evolved in photosynthetic bacteria, kind of way back before oxygen became a thing. Oxygen was quite rare in the ancient atmosphere, and photorespiration wasn't really an issue. So at the time, a cyanobacterium saying to its friends, guys, aren't we gonna run into trouble with oxygen, would have been kind of anachronistic. Like maybe the builders of the Great Wall of China going, guys, aren't we gonna run into trouble with tourists? Today's atmosphere is a very different story. It has about 800 times more oxygen than it does carbon dioxide. Where did all that oxygen come from, you ask? That's right, the plants made it. In other words, the whole sad story is their own damn fault. Thank you for watching.